Despite the delays, Washington and his generals decide to follow the original plan. Washington's column approaches Trenton, two wings. Defending Trenton were three battle-hardened Hessian regiments, 1,500 men, under the command of Colonel Johann Gottlieb Brawl. Contrary to legend, they were not drunk or even drinking. Instead, they were on high alert. Hessian pickets guard the approaches to Trenton. Those not on duty sleep in battle dress, loaded muskets within reach. Despite the preparations, Rawls' men are caught by surprise. Erroneously believing Washington has the town encircled, but considering the Americans poor soldiers, Rawl orders his men to counterattack. Knox's field guns and American musket fire shatter their brave charge. Rallying his men for one last frontal assault, Rawl is shot twice in the side. He'll die later that night. When the remaining Hessians attempt to retreat, their only route of escape is cut off by General Sullivan's arriving column. Though some Hessians make it out, Washington's men capture almost 900 and inflict 100 casualties. As the captured arms, equipment, cannon, and gunpowder is tallied, Washington is forced to confront his own losses. Despite suffering many wounded and others incapacitated by the severe weather, he reports on several killed, men who froze to death in the unforgiving cold. But more valuable than guns or ammunition was the victory itself. Though his attack was behind schedule, his conditions, fraught with rain, snow, sleet, and his enemy was at the ready, General Washington had shocked the greatest empire of the day. A British officer foresaw the implications, writing of Trenton. I was exceedingly concerned, as it will tend to revive the drooping spirits of the rebels and increase their force. <laughs> 